Chelsea a few years ago when Salah scores was kind of similar goal. Liverpool score with Mane and then they go again straight away. Anfield's up and rocking yeah. and Liverpool smell blood. And again, two minutes later, they're ahead uh, and Anfield's rocking and, and Brighton are not hanging on, but they they felt Anfield there yeah, a little I bit. I mean, they tired a lot, didn't they, Brighton? Yeah. I mean, Estupinian, two games running now, he's totally on his knees by the end of the game. Yeah. I don't think it was yeah. a shock because he, he's not an idiot. Like, he, I think he's a good player, Estupinian. Yeah, he's a good player, yeah. Everyone in the world knows just keep Moxal on his right foot. And you can kind of see he's trying to, but he's just tired and, yeah. he, and he can't. And yeah, it, the goal, I stick with you on, like, it's about the two subs, both of them are involved. Curtis Jones, who's off on my line for holding on to the ball too long, plays it at the exact right time. Salah's on side, it's all good. And then Mo, well, that, he, that's I mean, Salah he, he breaks out of defence brilliantly plays with the, the one ball two. at his feet. Plays the one-two. I mean, Diaz or probably has no right to get the ball back to him because there's people all around him and he's, he's running at pace. But he does manage to get the ball back to Curtis and Curtis then plays a really lovely ball to, to Mo, who's got you know, time and space. And Mo played well all game. It's just he didn't get the ball often enough. You know, when he, when he got the ball, he's a dangerous guy, you know. Let's talk about Salah then, in particular. I'll stick with you on it, John. The goal, let's, we, we have to put the, the, the strike itself first. Sometimes with Mo Salah... I've we've, missed it. Did you? I've, I've missed that that particular shot. Oh, sorry, I thought you, talk, I thought you, did, I thought you said you missed it in the ground. No, I, I agree. Oh. I, was, I was about to say... There's actually something quite refreshing of your best player just absolutely blamming it in top bin. Like, it doesn't yeah. always have to be finesse. And, and he, he can do that. We've seen him do it. He won the Puskas Award with a goal that was mm, finesse. Yeah. But, like, he just absolutely levers that the goal. He doesn't even move. It's like, okay, that, that's one way to go about it. Then. And it's nice to see that he's still got that in him a little bit as yeah, well. Absolutely. Uh, but the number of times you've seen him try and kill them and have gone off way over the bar or round the round the post to just see it sailing in just a couple of minutes after you'd levelled up it was just brilliant it's trademark isn't it that's what he does in it when he comes in from that right hand side onto his left foot and just whips it round and by that time, that time the crowd were just wild oh yeah, yeah. yeah we were absolutely wild near me was absolutely bouncing and I was in I was so I'm a fair team member so I sort of dot around every game but saves a bit of money. We were like, oh, we're going to sit at the top of the Annie for this one. And usually you're thinking up there, it's going to be absolutely dead. And it wasn't. It was absolutely rocking when that second one went in. Everyone was stood on the feet. Like, it was, oh, it was brilliant. You saw the reaction from the players as well, Darwin gives it the beans. Like, it, it was great to see. And like I say, Luke, I'll stick with you. It, it, you say vintage Salah because when you think of most Salah's best goals, everyone thinks of Chelsea. And, and, and what, like he doesn't actually score that many of these. Like, the Salah goal is often, he's a poacher, he's in the box, he's, he's or he's doing like, you know, Skin and players or whatever, he has got this in his locker. He can do it. Like if he finds himself in that position, I don't know whether we don't do it enough or whatever. But like, that's un- there's nothing you can do to stop that. There's the go- it's unsavable. I think the period of when we first bought him, that first twelve months, this was his trademark goal. But then everyone started clicking on. Oh, we just keep him on his right. He's not as dangerous. You know yeah. what I mean? So then he started getting good on his right. And you think about the goal against City when he comes in on the right hand side, just slams it in there post. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I think. He doesn't score that many of these that often now, but when you think of the catalogue of Salah's best goals, they're always coming inside in that left hand foot when they just can't do anything about it. And I think that's why it's just it's just trading. Well, the the beauty it? of him is that you can't be sure what kind of goal he's going to score. It, it, the variety yeah. is, is incredible. And it wasn't just the goal, actually, John, because you mentioned before the all round performance. I thought Liverpool's game management actually from when they were. They have a little bit of a wobble and they get the sub one for end. They bring Endo, which is the right call. But from there, they just need calm and they need a bit of patience and they need someone to draw fouls and they need someone to be able to hold the ball up. And Salah was magnificent at that win of oh, the, winning the free kicks. Winning, just keep holding I think the ball. he won three free kicks on the on the touchline, two of them because the guy had hold of his arm. Yeah. Yeah. And all he did was keep his foot on the ball and sort of looked at the ref and said, you know, how long are you going to wait? You yeah. know, Even the one on the edge of the box when we are, we are under the cosh a little bit. Yeah, I'll just take it. I'll just win a foul. Like it felt like real good game management from as well. Like maybe a little bit of a different side of Mo Salah because it's often accused, Luca, like you know, yeah, the numbers and, and listen, the, don't dispute the numbers. The numbers are the numbers and they're fantastic. But all round performance in recent years, maybe we haven't seen too much from Salah. But this was, this was like I, I called it on at the weekend, like a, a real lead. This performance, like we're winning this game, and I'm the best player, and, I, and put, give it to me, and I'll look after the four years, lads. If, if these are coming at us and there's chaos, I'm all right with that. Just I'll have it. Yeah, I feel like I feel like he does this quite a lot though. Recently, 
but he doesn't necessarily get the foul of points Joe, in terms of the game management with an anger off his neck yeah we're around, <laughs> around his neck and everyone, everyone stood on the ground screaming and the ref's just like no we're playing on here you know he doesn't get the, the fouls enough when he's deserved of them but I think also this is an element we've seen in Salah's game because of the manager you know what I mean? I think that the manager is about game management. Now we're not trying to win games by four or five goals. Join you know, the tight. We'll just try and see the game out. And I think that slots help and Salah show that, and then he's got it in his locker. Because I'm sure, you know, I'm, I'm not an avid Egypt watcher, but I'm sure he's done it many a times for them. Where he's always wearing the armband and he's gone, you know, right, we're one nil up here. There's ten to go. Let's all have a bit of calm. You know, and even I'll win the ball. I can take it here. I'm not scared to get on it. You know what I mean? So he also John could have had another worldly assist because he actually makes a little bit of a mess of it the, the running through the pool and he has passed towards Diaz is poor he, it's easily intercepted but I, I don't know how he sees Curtis Jones because he's, he's blind side and he gets that ball through and Curtis actually should shoot he cuts back inside and, and runs himself into trouble yeah. but it was just another moment of Salah magic really where was like I don't think anyone on the ground saw that pass and out of the corner of his eye not only does he see it he, man, he manages to find them as well another, another piece of his influence on games around the box is still just as good as ever. He is constantly creating chances. He's constantly scoring goals. He's a threat all the time. That's the beauty of him. And he has, you know, even... And people sort of question whether he lost a bit of pace or whatever. I don't see any signs of it myself. If he wants to go past someone, he'll go past them. You know, and um, he can go inside or outside. It doesn't bother him. Um, and he must be a nightmare to play against. And he was. And that... I, I, in tight games, when, when the opposition are good, Luke, and, and, and again, we, we give credit to Brighton before Liverpool needed somebody to get over to the game a little bit, and it felt like, not, obviously with the goal, which is just absolutely sensational, but it actually, it's all, it's all performance, it felt like it, it become like Mo Salah's game a little bit, and that's really difficult to do when you're playing right wing in a team that's winning. Like, you're not meant to get the ball, but like it felt like Liverpool, even Salah, fan, getting, just getting himself into space, constantly picking it up, it felt like it was like a, a real... Professional performance on Mo. Yeah, I, I, it was a captain's job without the armband on it. Like yeah, he'd just yeah, gone through, you know what I mean. So, and it's a marvelous for someone performance for somebody who's not even top eighty in the balance. Or it's absolutely <laughs> mental. Not even one of the best you know African I mean? players. I, I feel like people have been they've been sleeping on Mo Salah. And people have been trying to say he's washed up for ages. Like Liverpool needs to move him on. He needs to go to Saudi. He's not, you know what I mean? He's going to say it himself. You know, he, he feels like he's in tremendous shape. You see the pictures of him after pre-season every year. Mate, I couldn't look like that if you gave me, what, 12, 14 months. He gets three months at the back end of the season well, to get I mean, back in peak shape, look, you know what I mean? He's not far behind uh, Thierry Henry now in go terms of no, goals. he's close now. And Thierry Henry, you think he was a god, the, the actual... Uh, the way people talk about I think him he's the, I do think he's the best Premier League player ever and Salah's and, 11 goals and, behind him yeah. I mean it's amazing and he's probably going to catch him I've got the list here actually you, you led on to it well John actually he's he's now clear in 8th place he was tired with Robbie Farlow before before the goal at the weekend This, I, I, by the way I understand football existed before the Premier League <laughs> with all due respect to what you know Ian Rush and everybody else who were top of the, this is a, the Premier League's all time leading goal scorers um, he's 8th on that list now uh, 11 behind Thierry Henry in 7th place 13 behind Frank Lampard in 6th place 20 behind Sergio Aguero in 5th if he stays for a couple more years he's going to end up in the top 3 he, even this season if this is his last season and I know he hinted as much of the, the tweet the other day no matter what happens and all that put, maybe putting a little bit of pressure on Liverpool's ownership or whatever Luke he's probably going to get above Lampard into sixth if he stays fit I imagine Mo Salah's going to score the 14 more Premier League goals this season you would think he's got a really good chance of doing that like he's going to be yeah the, he'll, he'll be the the leading non-centre forwards in Premier League history in terms of goals which is just yeah, phenomenal I know it doesn't get spoke about enough doesn't it he's a right winger you know what I mean like he's, <laughs> he's not a striker and he's so high up on this list you know that's why Lampard gets so much credit in this you know when we have the Gerrard scores Lampard debate you know what I mean? Because he's so high up that list. But obviously, he must have played what Lampard every every year of Hatton's career, off in the last two. That's got to be at least top me head, what, 14, 15 years in the Premier League. Most stars are not that long. Mm. You know what I mean? So, and he's climbed that list really, really high and looking well, dangerously close. I'm sure some of them be shaken. But the thing Carrer always goes on to recently is that this might be the thing that keeps him here. Like the contract's on the table. Why wouldn't you sign it? Because you're going to go on to be well, folklore. How many games, John, would he need theoretically? To, he is 96. Behind Alan Shearer in first place, so he's on 164. Alan Shearer got 260. H how long is that for? Like the rest of this season, and then maybe another three or four. It's, it's a long time. I mean, if 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 he scores a goal every other game, you know, you're talking a lot of games to get 100 goals. Yeah. Um. So you know, but 
the, he loves the challenge of, of make, breaking records. It's the, yeah. He just loves winning things and breaking records and having that uh, on his CV, if you like. He just um, loves all that. That's why I think he'll stick around. If, if they'll offer him a contract, I think he'll sign it because he wants to break records. He wants to win more Champions Leagues. He wants to, you know, be get the golden boot again, although that looks highly unlikely for a couple of years to come. You say that, Erling kind of comes away, like, you know, Erling couldn't score from a yard the other day, so you never know, but he's 32, right? I was thinking, this idea that Salah, I mean, there's a world, John, he could play for seven, eight more years. Like, look what Messi and Ronaldo were doing, and I understand only now have they kind of phoned it in the last year or so where they've gone abroad. But I'd be to, really uh, surprised if he's still not as good at 35 as he is now. Well, that's my point. Yeah. I was saying yeah. you're right on the you know, to get 90 odd goals, you probably you need to play off five years, probably. If Liverpool can get that deal done, I don't think that's beyond the realms of possibility that Mo Salah will be scoring goals for somebody for five more years. He will always yeah. score goals, whatever, you know, because that's that's what he is. But he's good enough to score Premier League goals, that's what yeah. I'm saying. Like Messi was playing in Spain for ages and then he went to France, which I understand is a drop off, but it's still a major league. It's only now he's gone over to America. Same with Ronaldo, he was scoring major league goals right up until what, 38, 30 odds. Like, why can't Salah be doing the same? This idea that he's just getting going to be washed up soon. I think if. It, if he stayed at Liverpool for the rest of his career, I think he would end up as number one on this list. Would yeah. I, I, I don't think he will end up as number one, but I think I think he'd be right up there. Um, I think another angle just to take on this just quickly of the contract situation is um, Edwards coming back in because obviously Edwards sort of lost after uh, sort of left after sort of the Jordan Anderson tiff, and people are sort of murmurs around saying, "Well, Anderson left because and he did." Michael Edwards left because Jordan Anderson shouldn't have renewed the contract. Whatever criteria fits. How many years are they going to give Salah on this new deal? You know what I mean? Does Salah, if I'm Mo Salah and I want to stay Liverpool for the rest of my career, I want a four or five year deal and then I can go and off into the sunset somewhere else. You know what I mean? But is that going to be within the club's best interest and is it going to be what Michael Edwards wants to do? You know what I mean? Because it's very strict. You know, he doesn't want to break this criteria and reissue yeah, contracts. Yeah, I mean, you, the, it depends what Mo will accept. I it's guess. Three, yeah. I think last it, one was three. It, it's got to be. Yeah. yeah, it's got to be three years, but it's got to be incentive based, hasn't it? You know, just in case he does just drop off. Just he trails off, off a little bit. You've yeah. got to have that sort of clause in the contract that if he, you know, if he's not in the team regularly or for whatever reason, that is, 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 is I mean, they do that anyway, don't they? They you get bonuses for performance. Performing better, yeah, that. yeah. It's one of them. I think <coughs> it's hard to look into the future and see. I'm sure they're not. They're, they're, there's enough bright minds there to work it out. I'm yeah. fairly sure. Well, I'm saying is like, I, even if you can just say something like. Right? Same deal, Mo, for the next two years, and we'll see where we are in two years' time, and we'll just revisit this. Down yeah, the line. yeah, I think that'll, that'll give him a year option probably. on top of that. Yeah, he's, yeah. for what's worth, he's made two hundred and seventy. I think it's two hundred and seventy odd appearances he's played in the Premier League. So to get to that, and he scored one hundred and sixty odd goals. So you probably need. Yeah. You need like 200 games. He's going to have to stay for... That's a very long time, what, yeah. you, cause I'm, I'm going to bring it up because you mentioned before, Carragher saying what these records might keep him here. Yeah. That just feels... That's a long... You know, that's like, that is what... A, a, a good six seasons or something. That feels like... That's what I'm saying before. He's going to have to be his whole career here. And I wouldn't... Why would you rule that out? Because I don't, I, I don't see any decline. I see I a change don't... of player. But I, like Messi isn't the same well, player, Ronaldo is the same adapted, player. He's adapted, you know, and he's still as uh, still our best player, isn't he? There's, there's no doubt about that. Yeah, it's hard to look the future to see a Liverpool side without Mo Salah, isn't it? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like he's, he's the first name of the team sheet every week. Yeah, and yeah, his, his tweet at the weekend kind of suggested as well. Whatever happens here, so that was a little hint towards getting something done. But yeah, he was fantastic. Mo, uh, it's just pressure, isn't it? You know, I think he's played that card before, hasn't he? The Man United, put a little bit of pressure on the club. The Man United, though, yeah, no one's even spoke to me. Yeah, yeah, he's just. I, I think he wants to stay, doesn't he? Really, it feels that the yeah. vibes are he wants to stay, and, and I, yeah, I don't think anyone would disagree with that one. 